Hey guys, today we're in the pursuit. The pursuit of fishing. <laughs> but not just any normal fishing, we're fishing in the rice fields. <laughs> the rice fields, he's that, good. He's right? good. <laughs> Alright guys, welcome to the pursuit of coconuts. Today I have a couple of guests. What is your nickname? Nelpy. And yours? Eggsy. And hers. And Tallulah is here with us. And uh, that's the dog bear. So today, like this young gentleman said, we are in the pursuit of a different type of fishing, guys. We're actually going to be going to the rice fields and fishing. We're going to show you how it's done. We're going to blockade the area, empty out the water, and whatever's left in there, we catch. We catch and fish. Catch and eat. Catch and eat. Catch and cook. The rice fields, uh, are sectioned off into little parcels for each landowner and we're just going to go to one of them and then block it off. We're actually going to um, barricade the area so the fish can't escape and then we're going to manually actually drain it. So this is a um, specifically for fishing. Before we get started we're going to get some essentials to pair with our fish that we're going to catch so that we can cook a wonderful meal. All right, so these, there's little uh, channels that uh, have water channels that go through and it feeds the rice fields and the paddies. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna use a portion uh, or take uh, a section of that channel and block it off. And then we're gonna go through the channel and see what fish are stuck in there. So what we do, Legsy, go over here, step in there and show them what to do. You're gonna grab a, bunch, a handful of the rice that's been cut already and then pull the whole thing from the bottom up come on pull it up oh oh <laughs> so we're gonna take that and we're gonna block them off so grab a bunch of them eggsy and then i'll, oh, I'll block okay, them off okay okay all right ah. whoa penelope we have to put it all in the area to block it off all right so we also take the mud we're literally just gonna blockade that so that nothing escapes. Catfish. Uh, if we're lucky, we can... And if we're lucky, maybe tilapia. And if we're real lucky, a big anaconda. <laughs> All right. So check it out. So look how close, look how closed off this is. At first, I thought we were going to be doing the patties, but we're doing the channels in between because it's a little deeper and a little bit more easy to uh, block off and concentrate on. So, you got it. There you go. Oh, <gasps> what is that? Catfish. Catfish? <laughs> yeah. Can I touch it, guys? Yeah, you can grab. Watch out for the. Is it sharp yet or no? no? The, the, Right here, yeah. Side. Watch out for the fins, okay? Because it's really sharp. There it is. Look at that guy. First catch of the day. Catfish. Oh, oh there's oh, another one. Snakehead. Here. Oh, the snakehead. Where did that come from? Oh, he just got it. Oh. Hey, hey, hey. Why am I not catching fish? I gotta go join the fun. Watch out, Eggsy. How do you hold it? I dodge. Yeah. And they catch also frog bus. Frog? Oh, that's <laughs> yeah. Alright. Uh oh, look at that! Look at that! Look at that! Another snake head? And then oh. the frog. <laughs> oh wait, let's see the frog. Slap okay. it. He's hard. Hold. Hmm. Now he's going and go. Oh, the frog. Catch it, catch it, catch it, catch it, Wow, bullfrog. Oh. Is that a bullfrog? Oh. Oh. 
I love these stringers right here. They just grab little vines that are growing wild around the rice paddies and use them to string up the fish. It's like a one. Snakehead? Wow! What's that? <laughs> what is this? The kuaman on snakehead. Giant snakehead. Whatever. Take one Bullfrog. Small snakehead. Large snakehead. Small snakehead. We lost a couple catfish because the net had a little hole in it. We've got an eel. Right here. So we've got a variety of food here. here. And this is going to be so good. Roasted over a fire. Look at the snakehead. Look at the eel. Woo! So this is the this big one. This is the female. So how do you know? Because look at the the body from the head and the body. It's small. So the male is like almost the same size. Of the head. Yeah. And then they said if you catch one of this, so there's another one. Because they're always be together. Mm. Look at this, guys. Wow. The biggest catch is the eel. Look, it's like a scarf. I'm hungry now. A fish. <laughs> I know. I am too. I can't wait. Oh, I'm getting bit by ants at the same time. All right, guys, there's this mystery fish, which I wish we could have. Let it go, but we're gonna make sure Bonyak eats that. <laughs> they would not let that guy go. We've got a catfish, an eel, snakehead, snakehead, frog, snakehead, and the snakeheads are really good size. This is gonna be great just to put a skewer. This is the most expensive fish in the world. The eel? No. So these, you gotta be careful, Penelope, right here. They have these sharp. This is sharp, and this is sharp. We had a great time catching the fish. Now we're gonna go cook it up and see um, how it turns out. So we've got catfish, we've got snakeheads, we've got frogs. And we're gonna make some soup and barbecue into some of this stuff. We also got some pork that we bought from the market this morning. And uh, we're just gonna have a, a big old feast this lunch. So I'm gonna go ahead and get going on starting the fire and get this cooking going. Look at that. But this bounty is nothing compared to what it was pre Odette typhoon and flood. So this area was actually affected by one of the floods and this is actually one of the first harvests of rice uh, in about a year. Yeah, this, the anniversary is going to be in a few days of uh, when the typhoon last hit. So we we're just kind of saying, oh, we got a good amount. And they were like, no, this is nothing compared to what they used to have. And there also used to be leeches in this water, which we didn't encounter any of that stuff. So the leeches are definitely not here either. So definitely. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. The leeches, uh, the, the wildlife has been affected here. Um, but we're glad that we were able to get some fish. We're hoping that the population will eventually come back over time. And the rice fields has a few more plots that just needs to be uh, harvested. But what we're going to do after this catch, we're going to cook it and then we're going to eat it. So we're looking forward to that. I'm starving. It's going to take some time to cook this. So let's get going. First step, oil. Second step, big diced garlic. 
Third step, after garlic, onions. Fourth step, throw in our catch, catch and cook. Here we go, snake head, head. Catfish, big snake head. And the rest of it, including a frog and one clam. You got snake heads with the teeth. Ah, look at that. That's a hunting fish right there. You got catfish with the whiskers. You got frogs with the legs. You got eels with the smooth skin. And you got hinalang. Hinalang? Hinalang? Hinalang. Something like that. Oh. Then step five, magic sarap. They say magic sarap because we don't know what's inside of it. It just tastes good. Step six, crushed pepper. Coarse ground crushed pepper. Add the rest. Guys, I gotta figure out what kind of fish this is. Step seven, the most important. Coconut milk. Not all of it, just some of it to get the mix going, to get the boiling going, to get the cooking going. All right, I'm gonna go check out my pork. Oh, step eight, tomatoes. That'll give it a little bit of acid and a little bit of sourness. Eight, ginger. So we're gonna cook down the ginger, tomato, and vegetables. Oh yeah, here we go. All right, guys. So those are the main steps. I'm gonna get out of the smoke and we're gonna cover it up, let it simmer. And then after that, we're gonna add the water, refine the flavor, <laughs> and then get out of the smoke. All right. Everybody else likes the pieces. <laughs> It's so good. Yes, look at it. I was trying to identify which was which. They got the one clam we caught. One clam. And the one frog. I'm going to take a quick taste so that way we can all get going. <laughs> Alright, this is the Hinalang. And this is the broth of it. Cheers! <laughs> oh. Coconut, ooh, the spice in there is nice. Yeah. Spice is nice. This is the fish. It's been real tender. Look at that. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's so tender. Here, you gotta zoom in even closer. You gotta taste, you gotta see my taste buds. You gotta see my taste Oh yeah. That fish is so clean. Oh my gosh, so good. It's such a tender meat to it. Eggsy's ready to go, so I'm gonna give him a little piece. Hopefully it doesn't have any bones with the skin. I don't know what piece this is, but it's clean and it melts in your mouth. Wow, okay. The definition. Just thank you, Lord, for just... We ended up attracting a crowd in this little town, so the best way to make friends is break bread with them, so they were welcome to eat with us. So this is a wax apple. We'll see if it tastes like an apple. It doesn't look like an apple. It looks more like... Uh, it looks like a chili, like a red habanero. Yeah. Here we have a cacao. cacao. Yes. And red horse. Chocolate. Yeah, chocolate. Here's another forage find, yeah. aka we stole it from the neighbors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. It's 
so hard. Let me try. Oh, yep. We just devoured our catch today over a dozen fish and it was delicious. The fish were so clean tasting, so fresh. The meat was so firm for what it was. The frog, my daughter's first time tasting it. And then after that, just the uh, snake head, but the eel, it just complemented each other with the fresh coconut milk that they squeezed into it by hand. The pork was the first time they've tasted smoked pork over a fire for a couple hours and they said it was just as juicy as lechon but the flavors were just so good and I told them all I put was salt and it was just so natural um, and I don't think they've tasted the pork the way they have today so today was a wonderful day the fish we thought my experience was plentiful but they said it wasn't as much as they would usually catch prior to their big typhoon so the love and the Resilience of the people is just amazing. This is their first crop since the typhoon and they're harvesting uh, Their livelihood pretty much what they feed their families with they don't sell this rice And this is some of the native pink rice here that we're able to have with the meal delicious and Then the local fish local coconut local ingredients so much of this was just Something you can't experience unless you were here, but not only that I'm an outsider. I'm a Cambodian American in the land of the Philippines and they welcomed us just like family. They didn't see me as any different. We were out there working together and there's something about a catch and cook where you just work hard for your food and then your bounty is what you devour and enjoy. So such a special time on this catch and cook with the fish from the uh, rice fields and the, uh, the canals from the rice fields. Thank you for joining us. Again, this pursuit means so much to us. It's more than just cool videos, which this is pretty damn cool. But it's also the livelihood and learning about the people, making sure we maintain the planet and the profits that go through the businesses and also through the Patreon and also through the YouTube goes back and reinvested into the community here. So we just thank you for watching because your watches, please subscribe, please continue to watch check out our new episodes we got so much going on so much new stuff but it's all this is provincial living they've done this since they were 10 years old with their parents so it's not just something that they're looking for money or any livelihood this is some tradition that you're tasting that you're enjoying that we got to experience so thank you for following along on this pursuit the pursuit of coconuts we just thank you again the pursuit of fish from the rice field